Okay. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to give you guys a quick wave. I've been setting up everything, everything up, all the charts, all the news. And uh, so we're going to dive right into it here shortly. Does anybody have any questions? And first, I want to say hello to everyone here. We have Alex, uh, David, Terry, and for the people still joining and a couple of versions of our team. So anyway, and if you're watching the recording, the big question is what's going on with Bitcoin and Mt. Cox? It's uh, we're seeing a bit of a sell off in the markets and in our M3 active trader group, I was advising to get out and sold a lot of my crypto last night. And that is um, seems to be a good move because we're rolling over and we'll be looking for places to come back in through so after this Mt. Cox uncertainty unfolds. And certainly uh, that's a big fear and concern for people. And uh, but it'll get sorted out. So I'm hearing rumors that'll kind of filter its way through by the end of August, and that um, lines up perfectly with our cycle trading um, bottom, where we believe the the cycle low will be sometime in August. And we recently released a course about all that, uh, which is um, called Market Cycle Secrets with Juan Villaverde. It was excellent. So if you guys are watching and don't have that, you can go check that out at uh, moonstream.io slash secret, I believe, or watch the replay. Um, Irene, if, uh, if you could drop the link in there, that'd be great. I don't have it offhand. And of course, the our website here is uh, moonstream.io for Moonstream Crypto. And we do classes here every Tuesday, free classes and uh, trainings on our indicators. <clears throat> and then um, if you like more in-depth classes, you can join us Wednesdays for our M3 Active Trader class. You can read all about that here on our website that I just mentioned. And I have a limited uh, amount of private one-on-one uh, client work that we do. Okay, so let's dive into that. You can find out more at moonstream.io as well as uh, make sure to download the uh, trader success checklist down here. We'll be using that today to evaluate some trades. And uh, also, if you want to sign up for these classes every Tuesday and uh, be on live to be able to answer questions, you can do that here as well. And also sign up for our newsletter, which is excellent. It goes out every Monday and uh, our team puts that out and does a great job with that. So um, okay, well then let's dive into this. The uh, big news is Malcox is nearing 66K or Bitcoin near 66. Guys, I was saying it would go to 66 for weeks. We knew it. And it sure enough, it hit 66, turned around and it's heading lower. Uh, no big surprise there. We could see it on our charts with our indicators. And maybe that's a good segue actually to um, hop over to that. And let me see which uh, chart is that going to be here. I've got uh, a daily uh, that's the one hour, four hour, and yeah, sure, let's go up to the Bitcoin. We'll come down to some of these altcoins here in a bit. But um, now that sell order block has disappeared, though, and that's interesting. And you guys who've been following the channel and following these classes for a while and these training classes knew that we had all of these big sell blocks up in here right at 66K. So we've cleared those, and that's the good news. And so, um, you know, this um, a pullback here would be ideal would be ideal and optimal because now we see buy blocks down in this range so we'd love to see a pullback to around 62k and i believe if we start to turn there and put in a higher low that'll be the opportune time to go all in um now with the caveat now not financial advice let me just back that up a little bit um certainly i still think we're going to have resistance at these upper levels here and until we can break through then we're in trouble and possibly the trouble with this attempt here this fifth attempt um, you know, it, uh, if it's rolling over here, is that really the fifth attempt? Because we had here and there and there and there at this upper trend line. Usually breakouts happen at the third or fifth attempt. So we have to watch for, uh, these areas for take profit areas. And then once we get above that 74K, though, and hold, probably come back and retest it. So we don't have to have FOMO and chasing it. Then I think we are off to the races. So just to check the weekly on that time frame. Yeah, so and then the total market cap. Total market cap still shows a lot of sell pressure up above. Why isn't Bitcoin showing that? Well, that's interesting and would lead to the fact, the strategy to invest mostly in Bitcoin. This is going to be all the altcoins and everything else besides Bitcoin, but we're not seeing a lot of sell pressure there up above on um, Bitcoin, just everything else. Let's take a look at ETH. ETH has some sell pressure right on this upper trend channel coming down. Now, supposedly we have the ETH ETF going live today. Haven't heard anything about that. Well, I have some news articles that we can check out. And then I just want to look at Saul and we'll come back. But look at that. Saul and ETH still have all that sell pressure above. Whereas 
Now, Saul looks looks good. We had a breakout of this downward trending upper channel, coming down to retest it. We will look at some of our other indicators, which are showing near term overbought. Um, but on the weekly, still looking good to push up into that two hundred dollar range. So again, we'll come back to that. I just wanted to uh, circle around on all of this. And if you guys have any questions, uh, the chat here I have open. You guys can ask the chat in the chat here, or wait till the end. So, um, you know, Bitcoin again. The Mt. Gox, uh, they're starting to release. The uh, trustee is starting to release Bitcoin, and we were unpacking some news in the M3 Active Trader last week. Uh, again, by the way, you can check out that. If you want to go directly, check that out. It's at moonstream.io slash M3. You can read all about it and uh, get access to all of our indicators, our base indicators, and 24-7 um, uh, access to me in a chat. There were some other bonuses. So you're going to go read about that in uh, moonstream.io slash M3. I don't know why these images aren't loading. There they go. Some other cool cheat sheets, things like that. Okay. So I just want to make sure everybody is lost and is following along. So we've been talking about this for a while. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> Mt. Cox, of course, the uh, disgraced and defunct, uh, you know, Japanese Bitcoin exchange from back in the day that lost all the Bitcoin. They finally are starting to retrieve those. And it says they've, uh, they've shuffled around about two and a half billion dollars between wallets. Now, now we obviously don't want to see and haven't seen a dump of that much on the market yet. Um, and um, comparing it, however, to Germany's offloading of around $9 billion, I believe it was, you know, it, it significantly moved the market. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. And, um, you know, again, I think it's just going to filter out over. They have until October to sell it all. Uh, I think it's probably, I heard something about probably by August that will mostly have been settled out. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, but this is, isn't it funny how I showed you the charts for weeks. We I said we'd come down to the 58k region and then we'd bounce up to the 60 66k region and uh, didn't we did exactly that didn't we guys we saw where's that other chart here where i have that overlay where uh it uh did exactly what we were watching so you know this this looks like it's how it's playing out doesn't mean it has to but this black line here i said we'd kind of push up come back down in this 58k region actually it's back here around four where we said we pulled down into 58k and then back a little bit lower and push up again to 66k so anyway it's following according to plan so i think it'll roll back over here find some support around 62k if it does go lower and retest the 55k region even better for a nice little swing bounce uh, back up higher okay sorry i'm jumping around a bit so um and uh we're gonna go pretty fast here we want to get to some charts and uh, if you guys have any questions i think there was there was a question relayed to me about how to use Bollinger Bands, I believe it is. Uh, this is uh, partially a for news, and we're also going to do some training on our Crypto Mastery Indicators, which I had mentioned. And if you don't already have those, those are at CryptoMastery.org uh, and slash pro. <clears throat> and those are our top line uh, indicators. Actually, hold on a second. CryptoMastery.org slash pro. And that should go to this page, right? So there's a full training on that and what you get. There's me and about 30 minutes go through all of it for more in-depth training on this. And these are these indicators we're going to be sharing with you today. All right. So stay with me. We're getting to get to all that real soon. Uh, the data, Mt. Cox transfer. Let me skim through this. I don't want to bore you guys with news. You have enough news and overwhelmed by it already. And uh, so what's important here is not necessarily where all of this is going, although it's interesting to know if it's going to an exchange on exchange, which is likely going to be sold or likely onto an off uh, cold storage wallet. So these are mostly going to a wallet. So 130 million Bitcoin from the wallet was transferred to Bitstamp. So, yeah, so people are watching Bitstamp as to see if the uh, selling there has begun and moving to exchanges, as I said, usually signals an intent to sell holdings. So that's kind of, that's what everyone's watching for. These movements came a day after Mt. Cox moved small amounts of Bitcoin to Bitstamp uh, to test. Usually they'll test it out, right? You don't want to go transfer $10 million or a billion dollars, and you want to say, hey, let's make sure that worked. Probably a good strategy. I'm sure many of you have done that first. Your first Bitcoin trade, you did a little bit, right, to make sure that it worked. Uh, July, let's see, Mt. Gox uh, repaying creditors by the 2014 hack, of course, and et cetera, et cetera. So this is really nothing new. Just kind of recapping for us what's going on here. Let's see. This is Arkham Intelligence. This is a link directly to the data, and it looks to me there was a link inside that last article. So there's a lot of uh, blank boxes here. But here's what we're looking at. Ten hours ago, Mt. Gox. This is, okay, that's interesting. They linked directly to 
uh, the exact transaction and transfer 10 hours ago from Mt. Gox. They transferred some into a, a separate account, it looks like. Yeah, that's how you follow these. This was, it moved from one account in Mt. Gox to this account, ending in JHV, and then the JHV account moved uh, that same amount, 1.98, so around 2,000 Bitcoin into uh, Bitstamps wallet to ostensibly sell about 131 million. And, um, you know, that's a blip on the radar. That's nothing really to worry about. Um, Archem Intelligence is a great platform. You can also look for flows of the um, iBits and the other um, ETFs. So we're not going to do that here just now. I think that's a little bit overkill. Might look at it tomorrow. So on this site here, the second best, um, we're waiting on, yeah, so ETH soars. Let's see what's the date on this. Uh, July 23rd. ETH soars 25% in a fortnight. Uh, this can't, <laughs> um, it hasn't soared 25%. What's going on here? Uh, and what's a fortnight? Uh, is that overnight? I, I don't know. That's from like the Middle Ages, you guys. A fortnight? I don't have no idea. I think that's overnight. Um, Maybe you guys know. What's a fortnight? Just put it in the chat if you do. Let me just double check. We just looked at ETH. Definitely didn't pump 25% unless I just completely missed something. But no, I don't think I did. And my I have alerts that would have gone off. No, there's nothing going on here. Uh, Historic launch. Let's look at this. This is probably more timely. Spot ETH or ETFs. That's what we're waiting for. And, um, you know, this may be likely as a sell the news event. So they see 361 million in early trading frenzy. Of course, it's nothing close to the billions of dollars that rolled into Bitcoin's ETF. And, and that's been already sort of anticipated. Uh, this is going to take time. It's not going to be the big influx and FOMO like we saw with Bitcoin. All right. So what else? The SEC has greenlit the launch of the. Now, we already know that. Uh, now, the question is, always check the date on things, make sure it's timely. And this is basically saying they've green-lighted trading. They had already proved, approved it earlier and kicked it over to today, uh, Tuesday. Yeah, so as they started trading today, that's what I was looking for. And in just 90 minutes, total of $360 million, and it did exactly nothing on the chart. Um, so, you know, I think it's going to be a quiet rest of the summer until we probably pull back here. I'm, I'm mostly in cash right now, waiting for this next bounce. And um, <clears throat> we'll talk about that when we get to the charts. So let's let's get through this, then we'll get to the charts and the indicators. Sorry, guys, I had muted briefly. I'm um, just looking through this Bloomberg analyst, um, Eric Balkunis. Always, he's a smart guy. So whenever I see his name, I slow down and uh, take a look at what he has to say. Yeah, so he's saying the trading volume would rank these ETFs about 15th overall when it comes to trading volume, uh, volume which is still decent. Right. Of course, Bitcoin broke all records, but not not everything can be Bitcoin. And uh, in these nominal exchange traded funds, Bitcoin or <laughs> Bitcoin, Balkunis added, often see I'm going to the Bitcoin conference in four days, guys. I just all I can think about is uh, Bitcoin and uh, I should have my Bitcoin hat on. Um, by the way, if any of you will be in Nashville, I keep asking, uh, reach out, let me know. I don't think uh, many of you are going, uh, but um it so it would be great to meet some of you if you are. So anyway, we'll be there. Mike will be there, and Max Wright will be there. All right. So uh, trading volume, ETS, uh, market capitalization. All right. Let's keep going. Here's where. So yeah. So this is kind of non-news. I think what's interesting is we see Grayscale leading the pack uh, with their ETH, um, their ETH um, um, ETF. There, BlackRock second. Um, that's interesting. Then Bitwise, then Fidelity. So I mean, clearly they don't have as much money. Grayscale way out ahead. I wonder if some of the Grayscale trust money is dumping into the uh, ETH ETF. Uh, interesting, but not really all that important. Uh, so uh, maybe they talk about this here. They briefly touch on what I just said. And while the spot ETH or ETFs launched today, the spot price remains relatively stable. Yeah, so I don't know where they got that 25%. That's a weird title on the other article. They don't know what they're talking about. And yeah, so this is all we need to really unpack here. SEC, worth noting, raised questions whether ETFs should be classified. This is old news, yeah, but worth repeating. Sorry, the SEC, of course, has been saying, is ETH a, should it be a security? Uh, while the CFTC, though, is like, yeah, no, uh, but ETH and, e and Bitcoin are commodities. So, you know, pound sand SEC. So um, we like the, the CFTC. Ultimately, there's speculation they'll have a new governing body that oversees both of those or oversees crypto and that would be great and it can be neither and it can be whatever it wants 
So, um, and, and you know what, guys? Hopefully, we do see a more crypto-friendly administration coming in, and uh, without getting into the politics of it. But um, you know, I'm also hearing rumblings Gensler will likely resign uh, if um, the, the Dems and, and certainly Biden has resigned. So, uh, and and so is a lot of resignations lately, guys. The uh, head of the Secret Service, um, uh, Chad Chatham, Chatham, um, has been sort of pushed into retirement. So um, it's gonna be kind of be a bumpy ride, you guys. I don't know. Um, it's gonna be an interesting couple of months. Button your chin, your chin straps, and um, hold on to your um, hold on for your life, right? So other uh, ether really has on proof of stake. Yeah, that was something I said a year ago when ETH changed from proof of work to ETH uh, proof of stake. Would they kind of lose that um, Goldilocks uh, sort of protection as a uh, as a non security? And there was some some rumbling on that, but it anyway. Uh, SEC has sued blockchain consensus offering staked ETH on MetaMask. Guys, we're in the wild west, but we're moving forward. That's all you need to remember and know right now. Okay, uh, none of the spot ETH or ETFs currently being traded are able to stake the underlying ETH they hold. And that will be cool if we can, though. Imagine when we can buy ETH ETFs and stake it. So that's kind of what uh, this sort of um, um, gobbledygook is all in here. Okay, so um, that's enough of that. Let's keep going. We've got, uh, what did I do? I, I closed the chart instead of the news here like a dummy. Hold on one second. I went click happy, go into history here and go to ETH. And there we go. We got it back here. What I'll do is close the article and uh, we'll have our chart back. Um, at least I should, unless I launched that in a new window. It's possible that I did that. Um, I think I did. Okay, never mind. Never mind. So um, at any rate, uh, let's go back here. I haven't finished the news yet. Let me jump over and do that. And uh, so Finbold, yeah, this this is, a, I don't know, ETH source. I'm just going to close that because clearly they don't know what they're talking about here. Uh, so Mal Cox, let's go to Cointelegraph. Fairly reputable, not fully, full, fairly reputable uh, as, as a news source. Mal Cox sees 3.2 Bitcoin inflows in just two hours. So we're going to get to the I bit. I have seen some, uh, we saw um, in, an influx yesterday, but t today and on the one hour chart, my alarm alerts, Alarms went off, um, and, and sorry, guys, I've been traveling, uh, and uh, we're head, showing we're heading lower, and I want to show you there's some gaps we need to fill on the IBIT one hour. So I do think we're going lower, and the IBIT typically leads that. So uh, we will get to that, I promise. And uh, on here, we've got Mt. Gox sees uh, inflows, sorry, outflows in two hours. Uh, okay, that was today. I thought this was just, just forgive me, guys, 3.2 billion Bitcoin outflows two hours yesterday. And um, so, and this was 47,000 Bitcoin to unknown addresses, but it's not clear if they've been selling Bitcoin yet. I think that's front running to start getting ahead of the imminent sell pressure uh, that should start happening there. So um, again, we've covered this, uh, Arkham Intelligence, Rao Dida, we saw some of this, sure. Uh, Bitstamp, don't need to talk about that again. Mt. Gox outflow destinations, cold wallets, 340 million and, you know, it's just we're just going to have to let this play out. There's not really much reason to give this a lot of attention um, other than knowing that it's happening and, and unpacking this too much. So Mt. Gox address is deposited one dollar to four one dollars one dollar to four separate bid stamp deposit addresses. And uh, that's funny. One dollar. You think they do ten or one hundred dollars. But no, they did a hunt. They did one dollar before doing a billion dollars. It's funny. <clears throat> All right. Uh, or 12 billion, rather, with the latest uh, 3.2 billion on Bitcoin shifted out of the Mt. Gox addresses. The tally amounts over 12 billion offloaded to creditors since July 16th, and that was a week ago. And and that would certainly explain this rollover and uh, sell pressure. Let's go back to now. It's been interesting, though, that even though that was happening, uh, Bitcoin prices pushed up. And so it's not clear if they're selling on the OTC market, but if they're doing it uh, to Bittrex and they're following it here, you wouldn't see that. In the end, it doesn't matter, you guys. Let's keep an eye on it. But um, we have to see how the market reacts to that. That's what's important. So with a volume of 190,000 Bitcoin moved in three hours, Mt. Gox fund outflows contributed to over 12 billion in volume movements as repayments processed and the price went up. Hmm. Okay, well, I mean, that's worth noting. And I'm trying to keep it simple, you guys, so that it is not to overly um, overly complicated for you guys and, and you don't over uh, read into it. 
Um, let's see. And that's it for that. Uh, we were not going to talk about politics. Let's talk about... Um, and let's keep going here. Uh, we've got uh, a couple other things. BlackRock Bitcoin ETF records. We already talked about that. 523 million. That's the Bitcoin ETF. And um, <clears throat> we're going to get lost in data, you guys. I don't want you guys to leave and say, yeah, this is boring. Uh, let's just check Crypto Panic, see if anything is important on this. We've covered this and we're talking about. So the news of the day is Bitcoin and the uh, Mt. Cox. Let's see. Trump says Jamie Dimon and Larry Fink won't be his Treasury Secretary. Um Wow, he's, uh, it's very interesting rhetoric there. He's very presumptive, uh, you know, and um, um, she's just, you know, the fact that he almost got blown away there, that was, uh, you know, just, um, hopefully, hopefully uh, there'll be no more violence. So what Solana is saying, latest move could skyrocket to $500. I, let's look at that because I do like Solana. I do want to give you guys some things to watch for. And, um, I, you know, I do like Solana quite a bit. It's my IRA holdings and, um, you know, so let's see. Uniswap sees abnormal 1,209% whale activity. And let's see. Uh, first of all, I want to get to did uh, Solana. Yeah, that's the article there. Uh, Crypto Panic, by the way, is just an aggregator. So um, you can skim through the latest and greatest news. And then the way to open the articles is this little box with an arrow in it. Yeah, so I don't know why they hide that so much. So Solana's latest move could skyrocket it to $500. Here's my order of, of reading things. Um, headline first, news source second, and then you can see all the ads here. Um, when you see that, everybody, like the, it even says advertisement, they make money on their ads, so they're going to have clickbait advertising headlines. So uh, I'm going to discount this immediately. I'll still read it. Why Solana's latest move could skyrocket to $500. They're trying to get eyeballs and clickbait. Coinpedia, eh. You know, um, I, not not one of the bigger and, and more respected ones. So what is the big move? Let's see. Investment firm, uh, bold step, launching. Yeah, see, they're, they're sliding in. It's nothing to do with Solana. Oh, except that it's on the Solana blockchain. This is paid placement, you guys. Ignore it. They're pushing and trying to shill this Senior Credit Opportunities Fund. And just because it's on Solana and a partnership with Libra, which is is is, a, is uh, legitimate. But, you know, they're kind of, they're over-hyping this. Um, I just want you guys to make sure you have a good filter on all of this. And uh, th this is in a bunch of other boring news just to kind of legitimize uh, that token they're pushing. So um, uh, anyway, um, never mind on that. Uniswap seeing abnormal activity by the whales, uh, by the Uniswap whales. And why? Um, you know, it's just, who is this? Is you today, Uniswap, legitimate, but let's see, 20, so it's 42 million in large transaction in volume and doesn't really say what it was or why it was important. Liquidated the rest of its ill gotten gains, um, blah blah blah, something about okay. Um, never mind, you guys, I think that's about it. Uh, there's some other news here. Peter Brandt's been talking about Bitcoin, but let's not get into that too much unless you want me to talk about anything in particular. I don't see that. Uh, so we'll jump over. And by the way, if you're watching this replay, uh, please do us a favor and hit the like button if you're watching on YouTube and uh, you've heard it before. It helps these uh, YouTube algorithms uh, help more people see it. And uh, we've been told we have top 3% content, so we want to get the word out. And you could uh, even even get wild and crazy. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and that way you'll be notified. Turn the little bell thing on, and uh, that way when we do more of these, you'll be notified. Because uh, we have very timely analysis, and we've been right a lot. Okay, three weeks ago, I was we were here and I was telling people this is a bearish signal that we're going to drift down. We have very specific setups with our indicators and a couple other patterns we noticed. Sure enough, we sold off here on Bitcoin. And I am again saying we have some more downside. The last one we went down around 22%, as, as much as 25%. So that was a nice bull market or a pullback. This next one here, I think it's going to be less, about 10% into the, this next buy block on this daily chart but did you see that right there we have here it is our trend strength indicator is teetering uh on a bearish eri here and i'm trying to get back to my pointer here trading view god you guys have really bungled this here not putting it back to default to make it go back to the arrow okay so i gotta delete all these other things that thought i meant to put there and i didn't all right here uh right there that tsi our trend strength indicator rolling over into red uh, one of our bearish signals um, is sort of teetering back and forth. So we want to see how we close today. It could go away and we can stay up in this overbought region 
for a period of time. But and so we want to watch for this when it comes back down below 80 as 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 the bearish sign confirming usually a, an early reversal indicator. And that is uh, this other indicator here, of course, called the uh, ERI Pro or we have a regular ERI uh, pretty similar. And um, you guys can find out more about that on our website. Uh, but isn't that interesting? We see a not only a buy block, <clears throat> but also uh, this green box is where uh, previous money flow went. Combination of both of those two is is uh, is ideal, and so this this zone I think will be very well protected. So I'm going to be um, first certainly putting an alert down here if it trades below, say 62.5, I'd say, and then I'm gonna, I would even put in buy limit orders at 62 in case it does come back down to this uh, sort of mm, figuratively upper trending trend line. But in this um, 62k region. Uh, I would be buyer in here and I think to push higher. See, to break to new highs, we want to have a, a fresh bounce off of some key support. Now, I have my EMAs turned off, my 21 and 50 day EMA. And uh, we certainly could come down uh, to that area. We want to see the 21 day EMA stay above the 50. And uh, I'll just click on my tag, my radar really quick. The ra radar is mixed. Uh, that's how we use that. I'll come back around to that. And uh, how many of you guys are here are new and would like to dive into some training on the indicators? And let me just skim the list here. A lot of familiar names. So I think most of you have seen this. And uh, But we could talk about whatever you guys want to talk about here. Um, again, so let's go out again. The 21-day and the 50-day exponential moving average. When it comes back up, we always have a nice little pump and rally, right? And um, this one here has kind of been sideways consolidating. And then when we got back below it here, we talk about being below the ice. You know, you get below the, the green is the thick ice. You're drowning. You hit your head trying to get back above. Go back down. We're drowning. We're drowning under the ice. And then finally, we got above the thin ice, the 21-day EMA, this yellow line, and then finally push right up through that thicker ice. And there, we're back above the ice, push up almost to the old highs. And the reason I mention that is we do want to pay attention to that uh, because if we go all the way back here, I've, you know, the, when this rally really kicked off, it had, a, it had a, an attempt here and it failed and then it kind of sideways and then it just took off. It got back above the 21 and 50 and it took off like a rocket. That was back when Bitcoin was at 27,000. And that was back in October of 2023 when we were telling people to get it back in the markets uh, in our retire rich classes. And uh, that was an excellent time to get in. And then watch as we came back down and retested that 50 day, uh, not on the price, but the 21 day stayed above the 50. And then, then the price got back above it. And then that was our second opportunity in January of 2024. So those were our two times in the market where we were buying heavily here and here or recommending and so certainly you've done well there um we want to we want to see that again and so this was kind of a failure and have come back down uh, we want to see this come back down hold the 2150 and this buy block and then potentially power on through to the uh, next level on these charts and up to new all-time highs right so that's what we're going to be expecting and watching for all right i don't see any questions so we'll keep going uh, also interesting, our average true range, and uh, I'll, I'll, we'll turn on the other signals here in a minute, but our average true range has also gone bullish again. And even though it can fail in sideways choppy market action, it's worth paying attention to because, again, back here, we saw that attempt, then it went back to exit, and then that second average true range flipping to entry, uh, lining up with that, that great entry back in September of 2023 when the 21 over the 50 happened. And then a brief pullback here, followed by that entry point again on the ATR. So we want to be paying attention to that. You know, I'm starting to feel a little more bullish on this. And, I, you know, we want to be careful we don't miss the big push higher. So uh, I think this is going to be the area, the 62K area, unless we get some bigger bad news and sell off and we retest 55K. But uh, we just don't know. We have no way to know. And all right, I'll put the uh, Bollinger Bands on. Somebody was talking about the Bollinger Bands. I'm just going to check for rockets, by the way. No, no rockets yet. I'll come back around to that. Uh, the Bollinger Bands. Uh, most people use Bollinger Bands the wrong way with the wrong settings. And so if you go into your trading view and you just type in Bollinger Bands or BB and you put that on there, it's going to give you the wrong settings that um, if you can decipher between these, I know they're the same color, but the inner bands are the... I'll turn these off, our version. These are not very useful 
because as you can see, the price goes easily above that upper Bollinger Band and below it. And really you'd like, like to have it contained inside the Bollinger Band. So that's the one you can get off the shelf. But uh, our modified version, the way we've modified it uh, by changing the standard deviations, uh, this, uh, this will contain price almost exactly. I mean, it's not 100%, but it's darn near. If you ever see it, this is on our Bollinger Bands Pro, um, getting above or closing above the upper Bollinger Band, as you can see in these faint red lines, that's a, immediate, that's a sell signal. That's a take profit signal. And, uh, and you can see that happens over and over again. And sure enough, it, re, uh, it returns in to the, reverts to the mean is the word I was looking for. So it's always good to take profit play. So even if you reevaluate and go back in, doesn't mean sell everything, take some profits. So we saw that here kind of sideways, 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 pushed up again to that upper Bollinger Band and then sold off and uh, and then kind of had another chance to push up higher again. So uh, you can go through these, use these with your cryptos and uh, on the altcoins works great. And uh, similarly, if the Bollinger Band gets oversold, there's usually always great places to buy. So and that will have a vertical green pastel line. So when that close came down below the lower Bollinger Band, it just went sideways for a while, drifted down a little bit, but then it was sort of that oversold, started gaining strength, and right in this region, love this chart patterns, uh, inching higher, higher lows, back above the 20, uh, back above the 50-day, and then the 21-day crossing the 50-day, and then we had our early reversal indicator, and then a coupled by, I'm going to imagine our TSI also went green. It did. And our signal line. So everything went green right back here in October of 2023. And, and in our Retire Rich program, if you're in that, you know that some of our biggest winners came from buying right around that time frame, around mon uh, Monday, a little before the, in October 9th and 10th, 2013. We got into some great projects that went up 400%, 500%. So you can get these great winners if you know when to get into the markets and uh, how to use these to really uh, time your entries. So again, we are looking for this sideways action to break to the upside and uh, and start seeing these things push up above that old recent high. So it's going to be really interesting. I'm going to move this big circle over because this is where we want to be paying attention to. Okay. Um, Francisco saying, what do you expect for the Bitcoin price? Well, we just kind of covered that. Um, so I do recommend you watch the replay, but uh, specifically, um, I think uh, we're going to pull back here. We were uh, in my M3 Active Trader group. I was advising to sell and get out yesterday. So most of us got out and sold um, 50 to 80 or even 100% um, portfolios. I'm not suggesting everyone do that, but to have some powder dry, I do believe we pull back here to this region. I'll move this out of the way just so we can see this kind of pull back to the 21 and 50 day EMAs um, and probably down into this 62K region, even if it just touches on it. But uh, these buy order blocks, which are part of our our um, buy and our crypto mastery indicators, uh, which you can find at cryptomastery.org slash pro or just cryptomastery.org is basic indicators. But we have uh, a great suite here of the pro versions. And um, that's really giving us the edge. You know, we have these buy blocks. And uh, we were just talking about how, um, I, however, the problem is we have mixed feelings in the short term. The reason I think we do pull back down, and we were watching this here just a moment ago, this red trend strength indicator turning red. This is a bearish sign. And when it breaks below 80, that is the signal that's going to follow through and more than likely come down for all the way down below 20 again, giving us these excellent buying opportunities coming out of that lower range. So what do we want to do? on that trend strength indicator, just right click and we're gonna go in here and do add an alert. Crossing down, and again, it's this 80 range. This is where I wanna know. This is that confirmation right there. And then on my alert, I'm gonna say TSI crossing down 80 on Bitcoin. And I'll know what that means. That's a sell signal for me. Now we like to see these aligned. So, but we're also getting a red dot on our RSI Pro showing bearish divergence. And in this case, uh, we're seeing sort of higher prices on Bitcoin and the RSI is not really going up as much. I'm not sure the exact calculations because Joe created these. He's our quant engineer partner. But what I do know is when we see these red circles, uh, invariably markets turn down and go lower. When we see these green circles down here, excellent buying opportunities. You could almost trade off of that uh, loan, but we do want to have confirmation so that we know when to get in. 
So we call these the four kings, the uh, the ERI. So up here, when we have a bearish ERI, this red uh, red arrow, that would be one signal, the early reversal indicator. And then when the uh, trend strength indicator, the second one I just showed you, turns red here. And then we have the red RSI and the red signal. That's a sign that was all confirmed. And sure enough, we sold off quite a bit. Uh, also, I issued a uh, sell, uh, sell alert right back in here based on some chart patterns and our indicators right back here. And sure enough, we sold off 25%. So this next pullback is going to be smaller. And then we, I think we do break up higher, kind of inching into, you know, this could take a while, guys. We could sort of drift down into this zone and uh, and take our time. We could see this kind of thing play out. I have that other chart where we have that perfectly diagrammed. It's been following exactly. So sometime into August, maybe, um, I don't see a catalyst really to push us higher in the near term. I would suggest having some powder dry. Uh, the only thing that's bullish here that's sort of out of whack is this. We're getting a bull, a, a bell rather, on our, I've been watching too much Yellowstone, you guys, uh, a bell here on the trend indicator. Typically, a bell is our buy signal. But uh, we already had it trigger back here. The the later ones are less valid. Okay, the we like it coming off of a a drop and drifting down and drifting down like this. And then usually that first key bell is the best stop buying opportunity. But in a raging bull market, we do see these play out. And of course, you can always uh, always imagine Mario from Mario Brothers running through here, jumping, grabbing all these coins. It's kind of fun. Uh, but uh, right now, um, the other signals are bearish. So when in doubt, stay out. I had uh, referenced the um, the trade success checklist, which if you don't have that already, you can go over uh, to our website. Where did I put that? Um, here, this is our indicators, cryptomastery.org slash pro. But for the, uh, what am I looking for here? Um, the I totally lost my train of thought, you guys. I need to find uh, the trade success checklist. There you go. Uh, it happens at my age. All right, so um, actually a little, maybe under the weather, just came back from Florida, picked up a travel bug. Those planes, I tell you, they're filled with these uh, germs and, and uh, no fun. Okay, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom at our homepage, moonstream.io, and you can sign up and get lots of free stuff, our newsletter, or these classes, which you already signed up for, and the Trader Success Checklist. So just go in here and uh, you can download that. Um, I'm not going to download, I'm not going to, I'm just going to download it directly and I have the uh, secret link for that. So I'll do this and then we'll, we'll play around with that. Uh, how many of you are familiar with the trade success checklist? How many of you haven't seen it before? I um, highly recommend that you use this in your training because it's interactive and this is how you guys can really um, make your trading way more successful following the trade success checklist. And once you download it here, you just want to open that thing up. Uh, because you want to open up the PDF version because then it becomes interactive. Did you see that? Look at that. I put a little check mark there and it stayed. Uh, the short version of this is the more of these scenarios that line up, the, the better your trade success score and the more reasons to either uh, open the trade or add to the trade. So usually we're looking for this early reversal indicator and we can do it on the bullish side or the bearish side. Usually we're focusing on the uh, bullish side. But... Um, here, where's the top of the uh, bearish trades? Is there an overhead resistance? Is there an ERI? Uh, I need to update this a little bit on the bearish side, but it's essentially the opposite of uh, the bullish side. Okay, so on the upside, we look at that ERI arrow, and of course, that looks like... Let me clean this up a bit if it's new to you. And we cover the Bollinger Band. We'll turn that off. That contains price action. But going all the way back, our favorite setups right here, the early reversal indicator. Hence the name. A lot of uh, math going on in here. Don't dismiss it because it's just an arrow. Um, there's, a, there's a this is a showing uh, where the programmatic buyers and whales start are starting to buy. Uh, this has to happen with a certain time frame, and um, we can see what's happening there. There's a Keltner band sort of built into it. So I just I just for some of you who are more advanced traders. Uh, I don't want you saying, oh, that's cute. You've got a green arrow like everyone else. No, that, that's the visual version of it. The actual indicator is an oscillator. And like I mentioned, there's a Keltner band in there. It has to do with time periods and percentage movement and velocity and all kinds of math stuff, guys. You don't want to know. And so back to the check mark, though, when we start seeing on the trader success checklist, you have an ERI showing a green up arrow. Uh, yes, we do. Then you would check that off. And is the TSI gr green and above 20 line? That's the one 
just talked about. So that TSI, this is review for some of you, but it's important. This, this is all you have to do really for this trading stuff. You saw that green, this trend strength indicator went green and above 20. So that was the confirmer, confirming signal. And then this, our signal line pro, looks like it's flatlining, but it also had a green circle. And uh, you can see these happen frequently. The best signals happen when they all line up. Like back here, we had another one, ERI, TSI, Signal, and uh, and our RSI Pro. That's that's the other one that we really like. So we could have been building a position all through late last year before things took off. So I'm not trying to cherry pick this, but uh, these are the best signals here. We had ERI there. We had a TSI there. We had a Signal Green there and RSI there. Another excellent time to get into the markets. So kind of what are we seeing? We're seeing the opposite now. Whereas a minute ago, we would have used this to say, all right, this is bullish. That's bullish. That is true. And is the trend indicator showing a bell? Okay. All of these, when they start coming and you check them off, it gives you a trade success score down below. Typically, I'll start getting into a position at two, three, and four. And often, uh, the best uh, signals we're triggering is their bullish engulfing candles. So it kind of mixes the standard uh, trading uh, TA, you know, we're keeping it simple. We're not getting into Elliott waves and all these crazy things that you don't need. Um, not no offense if you use Elliott, just you don't need to use that, or you can use this in conjunction. And as you check, start checking more of these things off. Is candle body at support? Okay, yes, it is. Is it above the 21 and 50 period EMA? That could be a daily, could be a weekly, could be a four hour, doesn't matter, bullish signs. So now you're seeing that uh, we have a trade success score of 7 out of 21. I'd be fully in that trade by then. And um, <clears throat> the reason I mention it is um, stay with me because we're going to start seeing that uh, coming, start seeing that soon enough. We're going to start seeing the stars align. And what I mean by that is just what I was just talking about. We're going to see these pullbacks and getting above certain support levels. We're going to see our early reversal indicator hopefully hit down in this region, and our trend strength indicator will be coming up off the bottom. We'll start seeing these all turn green, but the thing is, right now they're red, and that's bearish. So we've got a bearish. Uh, it's, it's, it's inconclusive because we don't have the bearish ERI that we had over here saying it's time if this is rolling over us. So it's kind of like when in doubt, say out. That's my mantra, one of them. So we have our trend strength indicator rolling over. We have our RSI rolling over. So I do anticipate this further uh, pullback because of those two things. Do I think it's a deeper correction? At this point, no, but um, we have to just keep an eye on it. You know, if we push up and reject here or, or you know, in this region, um, it's tried so many times uh, that's bearish. But I, it, the thing is, though, with Bitcoin, what's encouraging is those sell blocks are now gone. And that uh, is a bit curious. So um, it's probable I'm just going to go out on the limb. Maybe. The, huh. So it was that the Mt. Gox uh, sell orders, even, but they didn't potentially get their Bitcoin to sell until now. I don't know what I should do here, just in all fairness, is go over and check another exchange because they might still be there. Coinbase isn't the be all end all. Let's look at Bitstamp. OK, Bitstamp still has uh, sell uh, orders up in that range. So these are likely these are likely the um, uh, Mt. Gox Bitcoins. Right. And they have it up in this range and they're sort of probably selling some of it. Pardon me, but these are on the order books. That's what the order block detector, hence the name, that's what it means. So we've got buy orders down here. We've got sell orders up here. Uh, for any important trade, I recommend checking around uh, into the other indexes. I'm not sure if this is even, okay, that's interesting. Um, on these other exchanges, let's look at a bigger one. We've got Binance, US dollar. And okay, no, no sell pressure on Binance. Let's see what uh, Kraken says, and then we'll check out some of these uh, margin traders. So Kraken has some sell orders, you know. So I mean, it's not not uh, not completely done, but um, I guess worth looking at Gemini. But I want to look at the uh, the derivatives market. No, none on Gemini. So let's get down into some of these. This might be uh, USDT pairs for those buy bits and things like that. Uh, let's see. Okay, there it is. Yeah. So um, on the leveraged trading platforms, let's see if they're kind of highly levered. This isn't the uh, prob probably the correct, uh, the be-all, end-all indicator. I'm just trying to get an idea. 
okay, there's the Bitcoin perpetual contract. Yeah, so there's the shorts are out there. The shorts are kind of suppressing price. We can see that. This is leverage short um, orders combined with uh, spot orders. But, you know, um, so we've got some work to do in this range, and it's not a time to be buying and selling. I would be waiting for this next pullback. That's a TLDR. Hopefully that helps. And uh, the chat has gone away. Let me see if I can pull that back up. Uh, let's see. David said the sell blocks are on Bitfinex. Also, yeah, yeah, we just covered that. So, uh, okay, Francisco. Hopefully that uh, expect, uh, answers your question. Um, it's hard to say. I think we pull back from here into the 62, 63k range potentially. Though, if we have some heavy selling on this Mount Gox, we could come down. You can see there's a wider area of buy support in that 55k region even 54 we could see that double bottom and see a nice w double a w shaped recovery i don't think this will be a v-shaped recovery that just takes off uh because of this mount gox uh, sell pressure pardon me so okay guys uh, just a little bit of allergies but um on the one hour not telling us too much here and but, but we can see that sell pressure overhead on bitcoin sometimes in the smaller time frames is where you see it and on the daily you don't and i don't know why that is but um uh the let me turn off a couple things here the bollinger brand pro don't need that i'll turn off our rocket indicator uh how many of you guys like the rocket have you are you familiar with the rocket i use i use it on small time frames though and so on a one hour typically don't use that on the longer time frames i will and uh but basically you can see all this sell pressure here on around 68k uh, on the one hour and on the four hour as well a little bit more at 68k yeah just it's a number of different levels so we can see that sell pressure order does exist on coinbase for some reason they're not showing it on the daily chart interesting so anyway, TLDR, don't go out mm, buying everything now it's to see of red. I think we do come back down, and um, we uh, got out of a lot of these and our alts yesterday. So at least I posted in the M3 Active Trader Group. Uh, by the way, when you sign up, you get a cool hat. Uh, although we're out of hats, retire rich hats we have. Uh, but uh, you can check that out again over at moonstream.io slash M3. If you like this class, we go into much more deeper uh, dive tomorrow. We'll look at the DXY. We'll look at the IBIT. And also uh, some trading opportunities. Um, I do give trading recommendations there in the Signal chat, which is 24-7 access to me. You can learn more about it on our website, as I said. All right, so um, uh, let's see. All right, so just going down, uh, looking at some coins. You guys want me to look at anything in particular? We are right up on the hour and like to keep these classes short. Again, we go into much deeper detail tomorrow's class in M3 Active Trader. And, which is a paid service, um, but you get a lot in there and you can certainly read about that. Everything you get, uh, many of our members are here today. Uh, we're trying to tr grow that community. Uh, it's been, uh, been a lot of um, great um, camaraderie and the news and, uh, and success coming out of that. Look at Helium coin, still pushing higher. Surprise, something's up with Helium. Um, how many of you guys caught that pump here? I mean, we were buying it down on this buy order block. Um, I, this is where I would put the Bollinger Bands on to say this looks a bit toppy. And uh, but it's 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 done, it is getting some nice steady buy pressure, and so was mobile helium mobile. Um, I took profits on helium yesterday. Uh, I'll wait for a pullback. Typically, I don't like to see let me just put that radar on for a moment. Uh, mostly red, I think this is getting overextended. And anytime the price gets this far above the the exponential moving averages, it usually pulls back down like magnet on magnet. So I'd say I'd be very interested in buying back into this. At, if it gets at or below four dollars fifty, you know, uh, and uh, for another run at, at this, but uh, these are still very early projects. I was surprised it sold all the way down into the three dollar range, but what, look at that right into our order block. Uh, you could several attempts you could have bought this for three dollars. It's always always easy in hindsight, but we were wondering is this thing going to keep going lower? And once we had this early reversal indicator, though, let me just open this up so you guys can see. How these signals really play out we had our eri right there okay and then we sort of saw the trend strength indicator uh turning green and then it moved up above 20 along with the signal line and the rsi and then we got the bell that's the 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 quad fecta well i don't know how do you say five it's um i don't know the the pentagon pentagon fecta we, let's not go we have too many acronyms already but when you get all the more of these you get aligned 
it's it's um, confluence and it's more confidence in the trade, right? And so that's what that trade success checklist is. Because had we been in here, we'd have checked off this. Uh, I still need to add the order blocks to the trade success checklist because we keep adding to that. But we would have had a one and a two um, bullish signs in the buy block. And then we would have the TSI go green, three signal green, four RSI, five. We got a bell, six. Then we have price back above the 21 and 50 and seven and um, breaking above a downtrending resistance. So we'd have an eight out of 21 on the trade success checklist. Well, sure enough, this thing talk, took off. Now it's getting a bit overbought. What I would do here is check out a weekly and see, <clears throat> ah, look at that. Hidden information on the weekly. So, so we are at a really good time, you guys. It was good that we saw this extended sell-off because I wanted to see the weekly trend strength indicator get oversold and it's the same kind of a setup, right? So we have the uh, the this going above twenty on a weekly time frame indicates a longer lasting, more sustained movement. Okay, so up here on the weekly, when it triggered red and got below eighty, that was back here in March. All right, and from there we bled out and bled out all the way down. It did turn green here, but that's why the key is above twenty. It's got to be up above that twenty line. Or it doesn't count because as we saw it rejected, we drifted lower. So on helium from that first TSI going red over here, you know, in full fairness, we'll do it at the bottom of the candle, the closing part of the candle, but it went down a good 60%, 60% on helium. So are these indicators useful? Very much. Uh, the other thing that's bullish right here is a couple things we have happening on the weekly. So I'm going to say um, I, we don't we don't give picks uh, generally in this class. That's for tomorrow. But um, I would say any pullback here <clears throat> on helium is a screaming buy. The Bollinger Bands are tightening. We have big order flow, money flow right in this four dollar fifty range, and I already have my alert there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna add to that and just so I know and say, hey, this is a, a screaming buy. I'll put buy exclamation exclamation. I'll be buying there. But tightening Bollinger Bands above the 21 week EMA, a buy block there. We also have what? We have TSI green and we have the makings. It's not there yet, but can you see it? The signal line's just about to cross there on helium. And look how oversold this has become. Helium's looking really interesting, you guys. I don't know. I might have, I might just to, I, have, I, I think I kept some. But um, I may have gotten out just to see how this settles out. And I did keep some. I might, I'm might. i going to watch this. I'll be adding to that. So sorry to click around so much. Let's go back and open this up. The other thing that's turning bullish, though, is our trend indicators turning green. This is the beginnings of the key bell sequence, which also signifies, especially on a weekly time frame, a longer sustained momentum, a longer trade. So helium shaping up to look really interesting. I'll go over to that trade success checklist again. So you can see right in here uh, is the trend indicator showing a bell. I should flip these because you well, it, it sometimes the bell goes before the green line. But here I would check that. It does the trend indicator have a green midline. That's the signal right here. Uh, not to be confused, not to be confused with the trend strength indicator. I know it's a little bit of learning. So we are here to teach. And uh, there's there's trainings, by the way, in the crypto mastery members area. And I've updated those trainings with the new indicators. So that's why um, this is a this is this is a must have. If you don't have these already, you are trading at a disadvantage. And go ahead and uh, check that out at cryptomastery.org slash pro. I'll drop it in the chat here and um, you can find it in our, our notes for the YouTube. Uh, I've been trading for 25 years, you guys, with mixed results. My my success really skyrocketed using these indicators. And as you know, we keep making them better. And I think we have them where we want them. There's not going to be, I wouldn't, I don't imagine there'll be like a pro version seven. We're not here to keep selling new ones. Um, but if we can improve upon them and add to that and give you better tools, we'll often roll those out and just give them to you. So you can find out about these. They are in the invite only section. So there's a fee for these. There is a lifetime offer and we've been busy. So we haven't had time to raise the price on that, but it's a lifetime offer is a great deal. And uh, you get access to our members area. You get cheat sheets. When you start seeing these line up, you can really hit some home run winners. 
and even use for little day trades here like I do. Here's a screenshot out of my Bybit account for come last week. So anyway, read some testimonials there. We've got way more than we show just because we don't want to bury and bore you with all the testimonials. But lots of people use these. They love them. And um, I, I would go out of my way and say you need these if you're going to be wanting to maximize this next bull run segment. OK, um, so while this looks a bit overbought on the daily, right, you might say, well, it's overbought on the trend strength indicator. But we're getting a bell and 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 the weekly gives sort of the longer time frame. Huh. I accidentally clipped on monthly, but isn't that interesting? Helium found support on its monthly support trend line. And dare I say, looks uh, like a rocket. There's a rocket forming on the monthly, you guys. We don't normally do the rocket on a monthly time frame, but at any rate, it's a big bullish engulfing candle with a lower tail on helium. Uh, helium's the one to watch, you guys. Uh, we have to see where the month ends because that could sell off. We're only, we've got a week away. But uh, I'm going to, the good thing to do here is put a, a notes in here and just say, watch uh, monthly uh, candle close. Okay. And uh, that's really important. I, I think helium looks very interesting here. And uh, that whole sell-off here, maybe I was just short-lived. Let's put a trend parallel channel on it and keep an eye on that thing. But if what if, if it goes from 5 to 21, pretty good trade, wouldn't you say? Let's go back to a weekly. Sometimes it's hard to see the forest from the trees. Let me just, let me just uh, massage this a little bit because we do want to, like, watch this uh, trend channel. That's even better. And it's a slow-moving trend channel, but um, I like it. Trend TSI going green will be, of course, looking for the bell on this. Any questions? All right. FOMO mindset is challenging. I know, but it's it's the hardest, but the most important thing that you can overcome, Paul. And so the key to doing that is getting out of the habit of going all in. Look at that. We're down 1,700. Guys, if you're an M3 trader last night, I was like, this thing's going lower. And sure enough, we're going lower. Um, not to panic. I mean, again, we'll come back down in the 62K range. Probably come down, drift down five, another 5K, uh, another four, three or 4K in the next coming days. And that'll take the alts down with it. So I'm, I'm mostly in cash waiting for the next pullback. But um, uh, but not fully out. Some of these, you know, if, if there's a chance they'll still explode, I sold like three quarters of what I had in some of them. But um, uh, the rest uh, I sold... I saw I got out because I just feel strongly about this pullback. And sure enough, we're seeing this and uh, the ERI is confirming the early reversal, the bearish early reversal indicator. But I don't think it's a deep one. If we lose the 21 and 50 again, then we kind of have a little bit of trouble. And this trend line is not support yet. I just sort of drew it. It's kind of baby support and kind of maybe um, creating a new upward trend channel. I mean, that's really what we do here is we, we try to identify the uh, upward, you know, trading a new trend channel is what we try to, because once we know that, and typically they'll widen over time. But that was another reason I was like, this is, this feels toppy. It's hitting the upper barrier of this kind of trend channel if we drew one and we're getting a bearish ERI. So I'm just, I've learned not to question this. And look at this. Uh, yeah, we are going lower, you guys. Bearish early reversal indicator, uh, bearish trend strength indicator, bearish RSI. <clears throat> So on the daily time frame, we're expecting a multi-day pullback, and then we're on the weekly time frame, it looks bullish. So hey, if you're a long-term hodler, that's okay. But if you want to maximize the bull run, selling some of your holdings at these resistance areas with the intent to buy back lower, when when our signals turn green again, you'll be able to compound your gains and do uh, make more. If if it pushes higher. Uh, you're not missing out because you're still in the, the coin a little bit. And typically, they will push up above and then retest. And you can buy it back there. I like to buy into strength. All right. So let's see. To finish the uh, question here. Uh, the challenging. Any advice Any advice to help overcoming challenge of not wanting to exit from fear of missing the top and ending up riding a trade all the way back down to where one started? Well, Paul, the best thing, and, and I, I know you have these indicators, so use them and learn to trust them. And the only way to do that is really spend a lot of time looking at them because I get it. You know, you're if you're not if you don't have the confidence and that comes from 
repetition, which seeing, seeing and, and becoming more comfortable. Oh yeah. Every time I see that it goes down. Every time I see that it goes up so that it's not emotional. And you're like, okay, this is the trade. I, this is, and you will make your own probability in your mind saying 90% of the time, this is what happens. And we're back to that trade success checklist, which is why I created it for you guys. Where is it though? Uh, I lost it. It's around here somewhere. Um, <laughs> did, I, did I close that thing? I'm sorry, guys. I might have closed it accidentally. No, here it is. Yeah, so so this is the answer to your question, Paul, is if when in doubt, get out, even if it's not all of it. And if the signals are showing red and it's two of them, let's let's refresh this on a bearish example. The trade success checklist. We go down to the bearish side and like, well, I don't know. The market feels kind of weak. And you might say, well, is there overhead resistance? Yeah, there is. Okay, now you've got a negative score and, you know, moving average or descending try on any one of these. Is the radar all red? You know, that's another bearish sign. So what you might say is, well, you know, I think Bitcoin's going to go higher at some point. You know, all the YouTubers are saying, Raul Paul and Michael Sale are great, but the short term, is what we want to pay attention to. The signals will tell you the short term. Uh, the YouTubers and everyone else, they they have no, they don't have a clue. Uh, and 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 you know, look, a lot mad respect to Michael Saylor, but he says, look, you can't time the market wrong. We are. He doesn't have what we have, and I'm not saying we get it right every time, but we're getting it right most of the time, especially at these key inflections. So selling half, coming up into his res resistance area is the strategy and start getting comfortable with that. And so we're already starting to drift down. Paul, I would say, go look at your holdings and just go sell 20%, 25% of some of them that aren't looking the best. And uh, I don't mean to give financial advice, but this is advice on how to get over the FOMO and starting to, you know, you have to take some risk and be willing to be wrong. But I didn't say sell all of it. I said, go in and sell some of it. Uh, let's see, Alex says, Trading in the Zone. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a great book. I read it years and years ago. And uh, and, and it's, I, I don't remember ever, ever, any of it. I should read it again. Alex says, puts your fears into a perspective you can learn to fight. Audiobook or regular book. Audiobook, that's a great idea, Alex. I might uh, pick that up to listen to on my morning walks, which I'm usually doing before these classes. But, um, you, you know, it is, it is the hardest thing is to get over that emotional side of trading. Uh, you're welcome, Paul. And, uh, but you'll, it's it, like anything, it's a habit, just like risk is a habit. My friend, Frank McKinney, he builds 20 million, $30 million homes on the ocean in Palm beach, uh, on spec, which means he'll put his money in to build them without a buyer in mind. And in his book, um, make it big. I believe it's one of the best business books of all time and a great audio book, Frank McKinney, make it big. He started out with it as a tennis player with $50 in his pocket. And, and started just buying small real estate, risking more. He says risk is like a muscle. And um, and and, and I, I'd say use that with caution in trading, but use that same mentality uh, when risk uh, mitigation is also a muscle and, and a habit. So um, I guess what I'm trying to say is most people, let me come back to the charts because this is an important point to make. Most people here, where we are right here, are going to be like, well, um, I don't know. It kind of looks a little bearish, but I don't want to make a mistake. What if what if it goes? What if what if? And then you'll think of 20 different reasons why you can't do this right now. I got to go do this. I got to do that and put your stick your head right in the sand like an ostrich. And then what happens is sure enough, it comes back down and you you know, you lost gains. and You're like, darn it. I should have I should have sold. And you're in that mentality of buy it all, sell it all, buy it all here. I really feel good. I'm going to go all in. Stop doing that. For sure, it's a way to get wrecked and you're done. Um, <clears throat> start adding and subtracting to positions based on the signals and your conviction. But, um, you know, here, if, if if it did, if you sold half up in this range and then it rocketed higher in a mega candle, which is not likely at all, um, you, you would say, you need to learn to your say, but I made the right decision. Because 99% of the other 100 times that happens, it won't do that. And you'll lose money by holding on to these pullbacks. So, I mean, so that is really the mantra of active trader. That is our M3 class here. We're active traders. Um, if you're here wanting to learn for longer term timeframes, um, then what I would suggest is kind of stick to longer term timeframes, weekly charts, 
Uh, you know, on the weekly chart, we're not looking terrible. I still think it comes back down to 62K. But if you're longer term, um, you know, it's not I, my style of trading is both. I'm longer term, but I'm going to swing trade within that overall trend I believe is going to happen. And, uh, you know, you know, we talk about monthly charts also uh, in the M3 class. So, you know, there's the more you can learn, the better. And, uh, you know, not to sound self-serving, I would I would recommend being in the M3 class. I think you might be, Paul. I can't remember. But uh, anyway, um, anybody else on on using these signals? We could switch over to the hot movers. But just to be clear, we are getting sell signals on at least three of our best signals, uh, the three kings, as we usually call them. It used to be, but the new three kings are ERI, TSI, RSI. Okay, all three of them are red. We're coming down. We're going to come down at least to 64K, probably into the 62K window here, 62.6, and then probably sort of trade sideways for bin, and we'll see what happens. But this would be a much better place starting to curve up when, when we see these start to turn green. Those are our optimal times to buy and uh, when we're most often right. So, <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at some other coins here just to skim through. It's a sea of red. Uh, you know, look, it's uh, it's the old tug of war. You need both sides, and it's um, got to be somebody's turn. Interesting that ETH dominance is uh, on an upswing. Let's take a look at ETH dominance. All right. Um, CE spot ETF launch our ETH derivatives traders position for upside. I don't know this chart. I, I don't like this chart at all. Under it's underneath sell pressure. Although I don't know how they'd have sell pressure on ETH dominance. I'll have to ask Joe how some of these are calculated because it comes from the exchange. It comes from the exchange, so we don't really know uh, and uh, where that data, what that data means. But uh, at any rate, um, I, this Bitcoin dominance, what's Bitcoin dominance doing? Where did Bitcoin dominance go? It's all the way down here for some reason. Why did it go down there? Uh, anyway, it should be that first. Um, you know, I don't know. This is really interesting. You'd think that Bitcoin would lead this next push higher. But guys, what do you see? My M3 traders, what are we seeing here on Bitcoin dominance? How many attempts to break above 56? One, two, three, four. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know how to read that. Bitcoin dominance usually leads in the early part of the bull and then rolls over as the rest of the market catches up. Bitcoin price will still go up, but, uh, you know, the dominance, um, I guess it's kind of be interesting to see that because of the whole issue with dilution of funds available. Uh, you know, ETH dominance, altcoin dominance, a lot of that's in the meme coins. So um, let me just make a little note here to us, say watch fifth, uh, five, I'll just know what that means. Fifth, watch fifth, and I'll set an alert here because we want them out. That's kind of, there's some key levels on Bitcoin dominance. I want to know when it gets above and then when it starts petering out and rolling over. But um, I don't want to rush off this. Let's look at this for a second. I don't need the Bollinger Bands here. And what else is on this chart that makes it um, a little bit messy? So we have, I want to go all the way back, all the way back. Yeah. I mean, Bitcoin dominance, remember back in 2021, uh, Bitcoin dominance all the way up 70%. So we started breaking up into this range in, in 2018. So this is kind of indicate indicative of we're still so early and the parabolic run is still um, likely ahead of us. I've got some really cool charts, by the way, for tomorrow that uh, they're really interesting, you guys, that are going to show like likely targets. I have mine, but these coincide with mine and they're very um, colorful and uh, where we think we'll go uh, in this uh, <clears throat> at the high of the next bull run. But here... Uh, it's just kind of losing steam on, on Bitcoin dominance. I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. And let's go down a little bit farther. We'll look at uh, DXY tomorrow. But um, not much happening there. Sol dominance is down. So um, kind of that looks a big old cup and handle, though, doesn't it? And I have an alert already on Sol dominance. And here's the thing, you guys. Um, once the ETH ETF is old news, which at this point it is, the uh, the next trade becomes a Solana ETF. Um, and um, not saying it's going to be as big, but we want to start watching Solana dominance coming up. Um, what, what we can surmise from this, uh, ETH dominance is going higher, but uh, USTT, people are moving money into stable coins. Um, so, you know, that's what we did uh, yesterday. Uh, ETH dominance 
Mm, just, but not really. It's underneath the cell zone. That's a sell the news event. Uh, ETH is probably going to drift down now that it's not the um, the most important thing here. But look at all these kind of bleeding out. Not terrible, you know. But look, I had a whole bunch of of ondo. I offloaded a lot of that yesterday, uh, and um, you know, and and I'm glad I did because it's kind of losing the uh, trend channel here, which um. I'm not too happy about because that was a great sign that this would should go higher, but uh, but we're not oh, we're not done yet. I mean, Ando kind of fakes out. I'm I don't want to spend too much time on it. Render, uh, render was kind of holding good yesterday, but now it's back down. The reason I didn't sell all my render is because of these buy blocks. There's buy order pressure right in here around six dollars on render. I would be even looking to add to this if the TSI wasn't turning red. So I think it's a good time to kind of give the markets a breather, wait for some better buying opportunities. And uh, I'm glad, I'm glad that, you know, we, we got out mostly of the markets. Stacks also, you know, again, I like these trend channels. Stacks trading its channel still, doing what it does. So not a good thing, not a bad thing. What we'd love to see is either put in a higher low in this buy block. So I'll put an alert trading down on $1.60. And uh, that's when I'll kind of know to keep an eye on that. It's crossing down. So all of our indicators, you know, they have the ability to set alerts on them, uh, which is great. Just make sure to name them appropriately. So now I have an alert here. And I was, so I will be buying most likely more stacks than $1.60. And then if it gets down again to $1.30, down here, I already have this DCA buy. This is a great area because this dollar thirty area held held very strongly back here the last two times, and it would be the still in this upper trending channel. I love this. This is my my ideal buy zone on stacks if we come back down. So I, I'm looking at this as a hey, there's a Black Friday sale coming up. I'm going to save my money for the sale. How about you guys? You guys like the Black Black Friday sale? Uh, Chainlink. Um, I sold out of, I don't like the chart. I'm going to wait for a dip and another shoot up higher, but it just had so much trouble holding above that $20 range back in here. Don't love it uh, near. Um, <clears throat> looks, mm, uh, depends how we draw the line and I'm not sure. Are we holding or are we rejecting at the trend line? Uh, when in doubt, stay out. So this one, what do our indicators show? Overbought on the TSI, mostly sold out of near. Again, waiting for a lower entry, but where would I do that on these buy order blocks? All right, uh, ETH, uh, I'm out of. Lido Finance, I sold out of. Rejecting at this buy or this side sell order block. Try to use my mouth, my keyboard, and um, and uh, everything else at the same time. And uh, it's a bit of a challenge sometimes doing that. Would you agree? So here on, on Lido, just losing this trend channel, I don't know. It's just a sloppy, janky chart. I'd be a buyer of Lido, maybe down on this dollar thirty range, but um, so so far it didn't do what I wanted it to. I thought I thought the bottom of the trend channel would push it up, and uh, so far it didn't. Uh, still holding some uh, mobile on Helium, but just kind of you know it's still it's just it kind of sitting here, low volume, overbought. Yeah, meh. I'll wait on that. I've got a little bit Helium kept a little bit, but sold a bunch of it last night. Um, and don't don't be mad. I didn't have enough to push that price down. I guarantee you. I'd be love to be buying on this pullback here on helium and uh, for that next push higher. So that's why that's why the ones that I believe will come back sooner, I don't sell all of it. I keep a little bit so that it's on my radar. Uh, I do like a AIOZ uh, chart, except that it's just a little bit overbought on that uh, TSI. So uh, market weakness across the board, you guys. INJ, many of these INJ rejected hard here. That's why I'm out of that. And um <clears throat> So anyway, <clears throat> CS, CLS, cold stack, trying to hold on. That's a very low market cap. And of course, the meme coins also selling off. Let's do this, you guys. Let's jump over. Here's this Zignali. It's this Russian project. This thing just doesn't want to stop. Okay, so Zignali is up to a new top here, kind of toying with um, price discovery zone. And the problem with this thing, though, is it has just gone so far. If we zoom out on Zignali, and uh, it is a cool project, but look at this. It came back from all the way back here, and it's up to it's up 23x. I know some people that got into this early, and um, I, just from a chart basis, though, I, I do like how this thing is consolidating. It's, it's breaking out on the third attempt. This is one to watch. The problem is it's not very easy to get. It's on MEXC. It's M -E -X -C. It might be Binance. Uh, might be cracking, I don't know, but uh, it's not on your standard regular ones. It's on like the bit gets and the buy bits, 
and the Binance's. And let me just see if it has it in the USD pair and MEXC Kraken. Yeah. So, no, it's a different one here. Uh, Zignali is the one. And there's a couple of ZIG is the one you want. So MEXC, BitGet, Gate.io. So it's a little bit tricky to get. Not impossible if you have an MX, MEXC account. Uh, if you'd like one, uh, DM me. I'll tell you how you can do that with a uh, specific kind of ID. And you can use my link to sign up and might give you some uh, free uh, coins to trade with. But this is interesting. I'm going to put an alert here for if it does break out another level at uh, 0.14 cents. I do have an account, uh, smaller account, but I've got an account with MEXC, and I believe this is margin tradable. So um, those of you who'd like to play around with those, you can come up with some early movers on these breakouts. I do like to buy into strength and not into weakness. All these red coins not looking too good here. So Zig is one of the few, and we can look at hot movers, but in general, don't usually like to do that when everything is down. Uh, let's see, and then we'll wrap things up here for another time. But uh, let's go over to the trading view hot movers in crypto. And uh, we'll take a look at that real quick. So uh, top gainers, top uh, crypto gainers. So basically this, sometimes you get some interesting information here and um, we'll just uh, have a look, see what's moving. If anything is on our radar already, I generally like to have at least like a 10 or $20 million market cap. Most of these today are, you know, if you see very low market cap, then it's not really worth it. It's going to be a pump and dump. Many of these are still low. CQT, though, has really been on a tear. I haven't uh, read much about it. We were, I was, I was mentioning CQT a week or half ago, though, and I was saying this looks pretty good. Wait a minute. Uh, am I missing? This is uh, maybe a different one. Something similar to that's been on a tear, but that doesn't look like it. Uh, so maybe it's a different one. So let's see. Convex Finance, I'm not that familiar with, but this is where you can find some great hot movers. We found ATOR early on. ATOR was one of our retire rich winners, and it was uh, it ran for, for months. Um, but these sideways kind of moving charts, don't love it. So not so much on this Convex. What is Hopper? I don't know. This seems like probably a low volume pump out of nowhere. And it's probably sold off by now. Yeah. So these things be careful. There's, there's no volume even registering. So um, let's take a look at that and maybe we could filter that out. Yeah. The, look at this volume. Six million. That's not nearly enough. And so with this, you can go into when you're, when you're searching. Let's see. Where is volume in here, you guys? Volatile, expensive supply and create more lists and screener. I don't want to spend too much time on it. You can always sort this, but um, uh, highest transaction volume. I guess we could look at that too, but I want to make sure we're looking at gains and losses as the primary, and that does switch it up a bit. So we, we can't have apparently two of these. that We want gainers. So anyway, let's take a look at this uh, Slurf. Convex, mobile coin. Um, look, check the volume on this 1 million no, none of these. You want to see probably 50 to 100 million to really make sure. So StormX, let's take a look at StormX, and then we'll look at ENS. Now, ENS is Ethereum name service, legit project, and that would be one to look at as well. <clears throat> and StormX, looking a little better, actually. Um, pretty good looking chart there. Our One of our indicators didn't load. Um, the volume on this is just not enough here it's on crypto.com i'm familiar with this this uh project but i don't i don't um i don't trade it and it's it looks very low volume not easy to get so at this point unless you're trading binance you could go play around with it nice looking chart but i would imagine that sells off end of the day it's had several fake outs in the past so this isn't one we want to waste our time on we'll run down over to uh let's see covalent we already looked at but ens Ethereum name service. It's kind of like a GoDaddy for the uh, the blockchain and valuable service there. But it's super, um, let's see. I want to say super expensive, but I'm thinking of something else. What I would do here uh, is draw a top up there and just say, all right, I want to know when this thing breaks above $35 because then it's in a breakout. And ideally closes... Uh, you could do once per bar close. That's not giving an option here, but I'll just say right above there. I hey, let me know about it. And it, ENS crossing up, I'll come back and look at it. So that's a lot of what you should be doing right now is sending alerts, setting alarms. 
and um, you know, getting ready, get some powder dry for when the next the next opportunity to buy will be. I think it's probably going to be soon. Just skimming through this to see if there is any more we want to look at that have our volume on the uh, trading volume here. Many of these are just so low, low volume. Here's that Zignali that we found. It's got nine million in volume uh, and market cap, hundred ninety million. Ant Aragon we have looked at before. Let's we'll wind up with that. That's one that's on a one of our lists that we've been watching for a while. But uh, I believe they they renamed or they had a governance uh, problem and they were going to close it. <clears throat> anyway, TSI red, RSI red. This is a no. It goes right away. You become emotionless on these. So so that's about it. Uh, okay, it, Andy's in a meme coin. How much volume? Four million market cap. All right, let's see. Anybody heard of Andy? Uh, I've seen pictures of it. Let's see. Why not? We've got we've got Brett Token, great name, of course. Pepe, all of these have had decent runs. But um, taking the fact that this is a meme coin out of the equation, mm, what do you like about the chart? Anybody see it? Really simple thing, you guys. Just chart drawing these trend parallel channels. These things do tend to trade between these trend channels. It's a lot of T's. But uh, anyway, so um, this thing's kind of gearing up to go a little higher. But where would you buy it? I don't know. You could probably find this, um, you know, on uh, one of the DEXs. This is Andy 2, though, so I'm not sure what that even means. Um, let me go back here. I'll put it on a watch list. Add to a watch list. And I should probably do meme coins. Where are the meme coins? I don't have a meme coin list yet, I guess. That's interesting. Uh, well, we don't do a lot with meme coins, you guys. Maybe we need to create one. If you want to drop your favorite meme in the chat, you can do that. And uh, with that, guys, I don't think there's much more we want to, we can really look at. We'll go over our other watch lists tomorrow, our speculative degen list. In the, a in the M3 class, we'll look at our AI coins, our D-Pen micro caps. We're going to have a lot to cover. And of course, the uh, real world asset uh, list. So we're going to kind of hunt around and see. But I think we do bleed down for another couple of days. I uh, had a good review on the indicators today. So great that you guys are coming. Uh, uh, Repetition is the mother of all learning. So make sure you're coming often to here, watching the channel and learning how to use these indicators. Again, if you don't have the Crypto Mastery indicators, go over to cryptomastery.org slash pro and watch this video. And yours truly uh, gives great examples and it'll show you an opportunity of how you can get these in your trading. Um, you know, buying them is only half the battle. Learning them is, you know, like with anything, it takes time. That's why we teach it here every week. And we've got great training videos inside of that members area that you also get ex access to. And do we have a picture of that in here? I probably should give it a picture of the um, a members area. It doesn't look like I have one. So I'm going to have to work on that. And the work never ends, you guys. So with that, I'm going to let you go. And uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow for those of you in M3. Uh, Retire Rich, we do not have class this week because we will be in Nashville at the Bitcoin conference. Uh, maybe I can talk Mike into doing a cameo uh, from there. But uh, that's a conversation for another chat. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Take care.